Malaria is a life-threatening disease that is preventable. Each year, malaria claims the lives of more than 600,000 people. Most of these deaths are among very young children living in sub-Saharan Africa. The age of those most severely affected varies somewhat from one place to the next. Chemo prevention, which is the use of medicines to prevent malaria, is known to be a generally safe, effective and cost-effective strategy for targeting those most vulnerable to malaria in endemic settings. Chemo prevention strategies center around how and when malaria prevention medicines are given. Some of the chemo prevention strategies recommended by WHO include Seasonal Malaria Chemo Prevention, or SMC, Intermittent Preventive Treatment in Pregnancy, or IPTP, and Perennial Malaria Chemo Prevention, or PMC, which includes what was previously called Intermittent Preventive Treatment in Infants, or IPTI. While WHO recommends several chemo prevention strategies, they are generally underutilized. Understanding and overcoming barriers to the implementation of chemo prevention is key to protecting the health and lives of millions of young children. IPTI has been especially underutilized, and one of the main reasons for this has been the restrictiveness of the initial IPTI recommendation from WHO in 2008. IPTI involves administering multiple doses of a drug called sulfadoxine pyrimethamine, or SP. WHO had initially recommended that only three doses of the drug SP should be given to infants, specifically at two, three, and nine months of age. However, this did not match the ages at which severe disease and death due to malaria occur in many settings, making it hard for national malaria programs to tailor control activities in local contexts. WHO had also recommended that IPTI with SP only be used where resistance to SP was lower than a certain threshold, defined on the basis of molecular markers of resistance. The pattern of malaria has changed in the last decade or so, but the WHO recommendations were very specific and not sufficiently flexible. So this made it difficult for national malaria programs to tailor the various chemo prevention strategies to suit the local situations. In 2020, WHO convened a guideline development group to thoroughly consider the latest evidence for all forms of malaria chemo prevention. Based on this, the 2008 WHO IPTI recommendation was updated to support increased uptake. The IPTI strategy is now called Perennial Malaria Chemo Prevention, or PMC. The updated recommendation is that, in areas of moderate to high perennial malaria transmission, children belonging to age groups at high risk of severe malaria can be given antimalarial medicines at predefined intervals to reduce disease burden. National malaria programs can now tailor the strategy, specifically the number and timing of doses, to the local setting. This means they can decide at what ages children should be given PMC, and this may include the second year of life in places where the burden of severe disease in this age group is high. The expanded program on immunization, or EPI, remains an important platform for delivering PMC. Evidence across the chemo prevention strategies shows that antimalarial medicines continue to prevent malaria, even when drug resistance means the medicines can no longer be used for malaria treatment. As a result, WHO now actively encourages PMC in places where drug resistance mutations, in particular the so-called DHPS540 mutation, is 50 to 90 percent. Chemo prevention strategies can really help by reducing the worst effects of malaria and supporting the health and well-being of individuals, families and communities. The greater flexibility provided by the updated PMC recommendation should enable its broader implementation and, alongside the delivery of other interventions, help to ensure a brighter future for millions of young children.